Hi. This is going to be a little bit of fun today. I'm making one of my giant crepe paper flowers. And as you can see, I've kind of got a bit of a mess started here already, but I am going to talk you through the process of what I've already done. I just got a lot of the work that I needed to get done to make this done last night and this morning. So yeah, if you guys have any questions at all, pop them into the comments, let me know where you're watching from. And fingers crossed this turns out. I, um, I kind of like that Thursdays has become our craft day. It's a bit of fun. I do love craft. Share with you, um, I posted a photo obviously earlier, but I'm gonna share with you a little bit more about where I got the idea from and, um, and the results and a bit of behind the scenes of that so you know what I'm planning to create today. Hello, hi from the other side of the world. Now I can see um, your comments on the TV screen here, but I cannot see who's leaving them. So if you want me to know who you are, pop your name in. And if you've got any questions, Garrett's gonna ask them to me as well. Okay, so we've got Roxa, Tanya, hi. we've got Danita joining us. Good morning. Alrighty. 37 people online so far. Oh, well, good morning. Hi, thanks for joining me. Um, like all of the videos that I've been doing during these lives, they will stay here in the group. So if you can't watch all of this video and you definitely want to know how, to how I make these flowers, um, please come back, re-watch later. You can fast forward through all the boring bits. And, um, and yeah, but the thing is, with this particular group, um, there's so many different ways to find things, like all groups. There's the search button on your phone, you'll see the little magnifying glass at the top of the screen. And then if you are on a computer, you'll see that off to the left hand side, it'll say search. And you can type in absolutely anything and you'll find something come up because with such a large group and, and you know so many people active in here all the time sharing and asking questions and answering questions, uh, if you have a question, then I guarantee it's probably been asked before and there is some information in there. Plus I share a lot of content in here. So there are files in the files sections with PDFs, all of the last four interactive PDFs, you'll find those in there with links to lots of different free content and resources. But all of these videos, they stay right here in the group. You can find them under the videos tab. And again, you're gonna have to scroll to the top of the group um, to see the little video section. Uh, you'll also see announcements. You can click on announcements and we basically have left all of the videos that we've done live under the announcements. So you can go back and find those nice and easy as well. If you're on your computer, they'll be off to the left hand side as well. So there's so much information here in the group and it's so easy for you to find. Just make sure that you use all those different functions because the whole reason and point behind creating this community, behind creating this group, was to give you as much as I possibly can to help you, you know, grow, learn, evolve, mm. be inspired, be motivated, anything that you could possibly think of, we've popped it here in the group. So I, um, I want you to make sure you use that because I see a lot of comments on posts all the time going, oh, I missed this, or I can't find it use those different sections in the group and you'll find uh, so much information. There is a lot of free content. If you know somebody should be watching this today and you think they may have forgotten about it or they can't find it or whatever, just tag them. Absolutely. They'll, they'll appreciate it. They'll love yeah. If you tag them and they're not a member of the group, they obviously won't see it. So you'll have to um, tell them to come and join the group. And if you are a new member to the group, because we have had a lot of new members join over the last couple of weeks, um, make sure you read the rules of the group because we see a lot of posts and comments and links being shared and things like that. If you read the, the rules of the group, you'll know obviously the reason behind why the group was created and the whole purpose of the group. And we want to try to make it not a Hello Martha Stewart. <laughs> Who wrote that? <laughs> Is that your mother? No, that was Denny Alfisher. Good morning. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Dan. <laughs> miss you. Oh, we miss you. Um, all right, ladies and gentlemen, if you are watching, I am going to share with you the first photo I found um, that gave me a little bit of inspiration to create these flowers for a shoot that I was doing for a set of triplets turning one. And I wanted to do something really different. 
and make it really sort of, um, you know, sort of colourful and, and, and I suppose I wanted to have give it a spring feel and Garrett's going to share that with you. Yeah, so I found this on Pinterest and I'm like, I need to make those giant flowers. And I did a little bit of research. I found some patterns. I bought one. The first pattern I bought, I didn't actually particularly like the way that the petals sat. And you'll see the next photo um, is, is the actual creation of some of the ones that I, um, I made. Garrett's going to bring that up. There they are. So not exactly the same because I couldn't find the same pattern for the ones in the inspiration, but obviously the flowers that I did make, they, um, they did turn out very well. But it all is based around the way that you cut and shape those petals, which we're gonna go through shortly. Mm. And then uh, the next photo is, uh, is there another one there of them no. set up beforehand? No, but then there's the final image there. Oh, Garrett's gonna show you which is really there. cute. So I did end up darkening them down a fair bit because when I took the photograph with the little outfits the girls were wearing, um, the white in the flowers really stood out. So I wanted to, to sort of dull those down a little bit so they didn't overpower the baby. So I, I did a little bit of coloring there in post-production, which was pretty cool. But uh, yeah, today I'm gonna make one of these big flowers, but I'm actually gonna make it a little differently purely because I want to put a baby in this one. So the flowers that I had made previously obviously all have the, the centers in them, like the, the smaller petals, and that was a lot, lot more fiddly to, to create. <laughs> and they weren't as big as probably the one that I am going to create today. So I had to do a little bit of thinking around how can I make this nice and strong to put a baby in. So I've got my fake baby off to the side here, and we're going to talk a little bit about how big you should make something like this and what sort of materials that you should be using to make sure that it's obviously going to be strong enough but soft enough as well to put a baby inside. So I've got lots of crepe paper here. Um, I've already done a lot of the cutting out and what I'm going to do is pop that off there to the side. What I've got here is five different shapes of petals. So if I lay those out, I've got big through to small. And that's gonna give me sort of the different effects of the, the petals as I work my way around the flower. And I usually go obviously from, from large into small, um, from outside to center. So I've cut out all five pieces. I've used three packets of crepe paper for each, each piece. So um, what I do is, here's a piece of crepe paper already. So that's been pulled out of the packet. That's where I used one of the smaller bits. So I'll show you how I cut them out. One, two, three, four, and we'll go with this one. So what I did was I just kind of opened the paper up like this a little bit and come in, give myself a bit of an overlap on either end and then pull that out. Then I just kind of go back and forth because paper, paper, crepe paper is nice and thin. And I would go back and forth and then what I would do until I've finished the, the roll and I would just cut one out at a time because it's you know a little too thick. I would come around with a pencil and I would trace all the way around the outside and then cut those out with scissors. So pretty simple way to do it. And I've basically just created my own pieces based off the shapes and the effects that I want those petals to have. And I do want it to have a really sort of textured, soft, wavy look. Now, when it comes to choosing the right crepe paper, that can be a little tricky. I've got two different types here. So this particular crepe paper, and you can buy this anywhere online. Um, Eckersley's, uh, you can buy it from different arts and craft stores, places like that, and even school supply stores um, because they obviously use a lot of crepe paper in, in primary schools and things like that. And you can get it in a range of different colours. We found it quite hard to get some of the colours that I wanted to create it out of originally. And all of this crepe paper that I've got here, this is the leftovers from when I made those giant flowers because I wasn't sure how, how many you know, 
pieces I would need to create obviously the, the results and in the end I'm like no this is enough I've got enough hot glue gun burns to, to last me. So I stopped at the, the amount that you can see there I think there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven flowers there so I probably had enough here to make another four more um, and more and anyway so I had all this left over and I thought what can I show you guys and I've always wanted to do this for a baby um, and now well I've got plenty of time obviously it's easy so when I ordered it online um, this stuff I ordered it in bulk and that's why there's so much of that particular style but it is really thin that's one sheet there and you can see it's really quite thin so you've got to be careful because it can tear quite easily and then this crepe paper here, I've cut out, I had, I got from a different supplier, it's a lot thicker. So I can pull it and I can, but you can see the thicker the crepe paper, it is more expensive. It holds the shape a lot better. So you can see I've kind of, I'll put one piece here and I'll do this. Um, the thicker stuff tends to hold its shape a lot better when you are stretching it and molding it to, to create that curve in the petal. Um, I have already started doing it with all of these ones. These are my outside ones to kind of save a little bit of time. And then I've got some more to go through. But you can, once you've hot glued them in, you can come around the prop and start to sort of stretch each, each piece. But we'll get to that shortly. So yeah, if there's any questions about what I'm doing, pop them into the comments. <laughs> um, but now what I kind of, yeah, this is the stuff that you make streamers out of. It's called crepe paper in other countries, Kel. I do believe it is. So what have we got here? Um, for people in Australia, this is from um, ostpaper.com.au, but I believe that it is crepe paper everywhere. So Garrett's gonna hold that up for you to see. And it's just spelled C-R-E-P-E -E, and then paper. And obviously you can buy very, very, you know, a lot of different types of crepe paper and you can make so much stuff out of this. The really expensive stuff is very thick and mm. it is luxurious, it is amazing. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah. it's usually sort of anywhere between 10 and $30 a packet depending on the size of the packet and you can buy it in large rolls and bulk as well online if you don't want to buy it folded like this. So it is cheaper obviously to buy it, you know, packs in bulk folded and things like that. But you do um, obviously need to keep your budget in mind whenever you are making something like this. So to create the shape, um, I need to give it some support. So the, the, the seven flowers that are there, they were actually stuck to um, little plastic bowls, um, sort of, uh, what do you call them? Recyclable, um, disposable bowls and just a, a dessert bowl so not a very big one about that big so not big enough for me to use to put a baby in so i've got some paper plates now when we talk about the size of props and how big you need to make a prop to put a baby in it if you think about the size of your arm and you're going to put that inside a prop so obviously a paper plate is not going to be big enough but the way that I am going to make this, and we're going to put some petals around the outside, you can see that it is going to expand in width. And then I'm going to layer the bottom of this with something soft that the baby's going to go on. So it's obviously not going to come into contact with any hard surfaces. So I bought a packet of paper plates. They've been sitting here at the office for, for quite a while. We do a little bit of catering here. So I thought these would be perfect. Um, nice and strong. And what I've done is I've cut enough um, into sort of more of a triangular shape and I've got some extras here. So to make my base, what I'm going to do, I'll turn the hot glue gun on. There we go. Um, I'm going to come around and pop the sides like this and I'm going to glue those down and overlap them and then that's going to create a really good support so that the petals don't fall backwards and they keep that nice shape so when you're photographing it from above. It's like when you see a flower, you know, like especially a rose or something like this, they have those, um, you know, leaves underneath that create that support to keep that, that beautiful shape and then as they sort of start to, 
to die off and, and wilt, um, they fall down. And that's unfortunately what happened to my seven flowers. I didn't create the support around the outside. I basically had a bowl and I was coming in and sticking the petals to the outside of the bowl. So eventually they just kind of wilted like that and all fell down. So I wanna create something that's gonna have a little bit more structure and support around the outside to, um, to keep the shape of those flowers. Now it is gonna be a very delicate prop, but it might not be something that I use often, but at least I'm gonna create something that's gonna be unique and different that I can use for when my clients come in. So I, I want you to um, you know, think about all the different things that you could possibly make. I'm gonna style this off a peony flower, but there are many different flowers that you could um, potentially sort of replicate to create beautiful shape. And even if you could get hold of some feathers, doing this with feathers all the way around the outside would be absolutely beautiful as well. So there's lots of ideas out there for you. All right, we've got lots of people joining us. We do, we've Hi. got 117 people. Holy smokes. Yeah, somebody has put a link in there to, um, it looks like, uh, Michaels.com, uh, Michaels Chris. Yes. Crepe paper, so perfect. It's, um, the like American equivalent, I think. Lovely. Like our yeah. Spotlight and that sort of thing. Eckersleys. So if you've got some time, and this is the thing, like I was like, what am I going to do with all this crepe paper when I made those flowers and I'd ordered too much, and then it was always sort of in the back of my mind that I'd love to make one you know, um, to put a baby inside of. So I need to keep the center free. So I've only cut pebbles, pet, petals, pebbles, petals for um, the outside. I've got one of those little teeny tiny bugs flying around. All right, so I think my hot glue gun's starting to warm up here. Not quite. But what I've also done after I have sort of, I'll wait for that to heat up a bit more, is I am coming around and stretching these, these petals. So the way that I kind of um, cut them, if you see, the thinner ones actually give you a really soft, beautiful shape. And, um, and if you just kind of pull out that way, it, it helps those sit out. But yeah, the, um, when you stretch the, the crepe paper, and you can do it two at a time with the thinner stuff, you can really kind of come around and give it a, a pull. So this is where I've ripped quite a few doing mm -hmm. this so you've got to be very careful when you pull and stretch that crepe paper that's why the, the the more expensive thicker crepe paper does work really well and it holds its shape well but the the thinner stuff does have that nice soft look about it as well all right so you guys got any questions now a few people have been throwing me some challenges I just have to say that the uh, the member of the group that shared the challenge with the lady doing a makeup tutorial with a man's hands, they weren't her hands, that had me laughing so hard this morning when I woke up to see that. And I thought to myself, there is no way I could do that with my husband, ever. No, never. It would uh, definitely end up being a very memorable occasion. But he's, um, he's very heavy handed. We call him Bam Bam. <laughs> yeah, I'd probably end up with makeup absolutely everything, everywhere, but I don't think I'd be able to breathe for laughing if we did do it. So yeah, I love that challenge. But if you do have some ideas and some stuff that you want made um, for our craft days on Thursdays, which they've become, pop those into comments in the group. I'd love to see some ideas and some challenges. Someone's asked me to make a tree of life um, and I'm going to do that next Thursday, a prop that's um, themed around the tree of life. So we'll, I'll have a think about how I'm going to do that and what sort of materials I'm going to use. There's been many times throughout this week where you're looking across at Kelly sitting at her computer and she's staring off into space and it's like, what are you thinking about? Mm, that tree of life thing that I mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> It's nice. I don't know about you guys, but I have completely caught up on all the editing of my baby models. I've got a couple more photos that I'm still finishing off. Um, two from my, my children's creative class at WPPI that I taught earlier and um, at the beginning of March. And I am um, 
I'm loving the way that they're coming along. They are more creative, so they take a little bit longer for me to, to edit. Um, Alrighty. Michelle Kenner wants to see my hands doing Rob's makeup. Oh my God, that would be yep, hilarious. Yep. And approximately how many petals have you cut out, do you think? So I haven't actually counted them individually, but for each shape of petal, I have used three packets of crepe paper. And the crepe paper is um, 50 centimetres um, in width, I suppose, and then 2.5 metres in length. So th it's created quite a few petals, and I always find it's better to have, um, you know, more than required. It's because you will tear some, and I like to make mine look nice and full. There's a question there. I've seen these flowers made out of foam. Do you oh, think this yes. technique would work? Foam could be quite expensive. So I'm kind of using um, materials that I already had here in the studio. And I have seen those beautiful foam ones. And they do look a little bit trickier to make in terms of getting them nice and precise in the petals. And uh, But I would love to attempt making one out of foam. I'm just going to have to order some online. But yeah, there's so many great tutorials available. Hold that down a bit longer there. I'm gonna go through a lot of hot glue. And I am gonna use some duct tape, material sort of masking tape behind this to help keep them nice and strong. And that's the thing, whenever you wanna put a baby in something, you gotta think, how can you make it as strong as you possibly can? to not, um, you know, obviously create anything that's unstable or unsafe. And about how many layers do you think it was that you cut out at a time? Or was it just uh, one the, packet. Um, the limit of your, your scissors? Scissors, <laughs> yeah, one packet. <laughs> that's for sure. All right. Oh, somebody said here, any chance we could get a session on felt? <gasps> so this is the thing I'm I don't know if I I'm gonna be able I, I've never tried that here this is me doubting myself people and then that whole uh, whole thought process of oh god well what if I don't get it right <laughs> <laughs> it's a safe space here okay let me let me think about what I could felt and and we'll create something that is a little different. But yeah, I had, with the patterns that we, ma we made, um, my oldest, Georgia Brown, she made 11 little pillows for my studio over Easter. I'll, I'll have to photograph them, but I had like all these, you know how you buy the patches, like the little squares of fabric in all the different um, colors and patterns for quilting? You can buy little, little sort of bundles little of swatches. squares. From the fabric store so i had some of those here and i was one day going to make something i don't know what it was and that's the thing i buy things all the time but um yeah i took them home and she got the sewing machine out and she made um 11 little pillows for the studio for, and this they're, they're so pretty all the little colors and patterns uh jade reed is backing you for the felting she says it's easy and fun okay <laughs> i don't know i look at it and i just think that is it's so intricate and um i will definitely have a go that's for sure and Kelly, just for those who are joining us late, can you do a little bit of a recap of what you're doing today? Please? Okay, so we are making a large crepe paper flower to pop a baby in. So I, um, a new prop for the studio out of crepe paper. And now I'm creating the, the, the base um, to help give it support and structure to keep the petals nice and upright and strong. I'm just... I've cut the sides off these paper plates. All right, so Garrett's actually got a little video there. Do you want to show that with them from that shoot with the triplets? Let me tee that up. While I finish hot gluing the rest of these. Get my uh, technicals working here. Um, and I'll keep a view of Kelly so you can see what she's doing. That I've got to push that button, then I've got to push this button. 
Here we go. This was such a beautiful little shoe. Yeah. So you can see Kelly's done the um, those flowers on a base. And it was, um, what type of pipe was it that you used? It was just a plastic plumbing pipe, like a, um, like a, uh, what do you call it? it um, just from the hardware, it was just sort of... Uh, was it a PVC pipe? Like a PVC pipe, very strong, like what plumbers use, or electrical conduit it was called. Oh, electrical conduit. There you go. <laughs> and it was um, pieces of dowel up from the timber base um, that the um, conduit went over the top of. Yeah, and um, to give the, the stems a little bit of a curve and a shape, we used a, um, a heat gun just to kind of bend them a little bit. But you can see here with these little babies, um, all the different personalities. There was one that was, you know, quite contented to sit there. The other was very shy. And then there was one that was very outgoing. Um, which we find, you know, quite common. Babies that age. That was a lot of fun. And I will play that again later on during the process. So, yeah. just bring up the image that... We have loved seeing everyone's craft and, you know, photos and progress and ideas and things like that being shared in the group. I think it's such a great way to, you know, stay active, keep your camera skills going, improving. You know, if you stop, you stop doing everything, you, you tend to kind of lose a little bit of, um, you know, connection with mm. what you're doing. I love seeing everyone's hearts from um, the heart prop. Oh yeah. It's been amazing. A few attempts at other shapes there as well. Absolutely. The round bowl was great, how they used the smaller one on the inside and then the larger on the outside to create that bowl shape. All right, so I got my white tape and um, I'm gonna pop this around the back on some of these pieces to kind of give them the shape here. So this is just cloth tape we call it duct tape, but the cloth tape I find is really sticky, really strong. This is the same stuff that Kelly used for the heart prop. Yeah. A uh, gaffer. Gaff tape. Yes. So yeah, we've made a cute flower already. <laughs> bit off topic question but you can kind of answer it while um, while you're going there have you ever had a client in your studio where they have really challenged you oh absolutely do you know um, and it's out of and it was early on a lot of people clients they will challenge you when they don't know what to expect they will challenge you if they are unsure of what's happening and they have doubt and that's and, and challenges and things like that always come from a place of fear I find so it's really important um, you know when you are communicating with your clients that you answer any potential questions that they might have before the session the um, the thing with with clients is when I said you know that used to happen to me early on it was because I didn't trust myself I was often intimidated because I didn't own what I did. I was worried about what parents thought, but I learned through experience how to communicate with my clients and how to um, understand their needs and wants. And the thing is, when people question you, or when people have a problem, the, the re, like, the only person, we can't always blame them. There is always going to be some more difficult clients than others, but it, it all basically comes down to how you communicate with them. 
And the only person that we have to blame at the end of the day, if a client is unhappy or feels like they need to challenge you, is ourselves because we haven't at some point given them the information that they need to make them feel confident in us and our abilities and what's, going, what's happening. So we've got to talk your clients through the entire process from start to finish. You need to give them all the information they need prior to the session, what's involved, when it's happening, where is it happening, how is it going to happen, and all of that stuff. Because like I keep saying in, in every time we have a chat, you know, parents see the photos, but they don't often know how they are created. So we've got to be very aware of that. We've got to continually remove ourselves from the process. We're there to do a job, but it's not about us. It's about our clients. It's about us providing a product and service and receiving payment in exchange for that. And we've got to remember that. But we, we're not just selling photos. We are selling experiences to our clients. And if, we are, if they're not enjoying the experience, if they feel challenged, if they are doubting your abilities, it's because you haven't given them the, the right information or communicated to them what, you know, what's going to happen next or what to expect or um, how the process goes. You know, for example, at the beginning of every session, my clients come in, I talk to them, I ask them all the questions that I need to know the answers to to do my job. You know, when was your baby last fed? Are we breast or bottle? Was that a big feed, do you think, or a snack? You know, things like that. Um, and how have they been going? Do they get a little wind normally after um, things? And that's when they're gonna tell you all of those things. Okay, so throughout this session, I'm gonna start on my posing bag. I'm gonna go through a series of three to four poses. I'm then gonna move on to one or two props. I'm gonna get you to help me choose those. And then I'm gonna take some beautiful photos of you guys together. And that way I can get you out of here as quickly as possible because I'm guessing you haven't had much sleep lately. So that kind of rolls off the tongue really easy because I say it in every session. I let them know what I'm doing. So I don't just take their baby and then they're kind of sitting there going, what's going on? But often we feel like our client is sitting on our shoulder like a hawk, watching everything. And that's purely because they don't want to miss a second. When you think about, for those of you that have got your own babies, you think about when you first brought them home or when you first met them, you couldn't take your eyes off them. You don't want to miss a second. And that's why they say that they're the best time wasters because they truly are. All right, so I'm just gonna give that a really good rub now from the other side, let that material stick. And Deborah's asked there, um, was that Animoto? I'm guessing that's the video. It no. wasn't made in Animoto, but that is a perfect thing that you could actually make in um, Animoto because all the pieces of footage were basically smaller pieces and then you're basically dropping them into the timeline, throwing the music over the top and hitting save. So Absolutely. Animoto would be a great way to, to produce something like that. Totally. Yeah, and that's the thing, we're always creating behind the scenes content. So when you guys start shooting again, if you have a friend that's a photographer, if you have a family member that knows how to use a, um, a camera, if you have anybody at all that can come along and grab some behind the scenes footage of you, it is such a great thing to share on your social media pages. Now I'm just popping in another plate here over the top and I'm just gonna come around and hot glue this down just to give it that little bit of extra support. Uh, Deborah's asked, do you do a pre-consultation? So I do everything over the phone. A lot of my clients have to travel um, for sessions. So everything's over the phone or via email, however my clients prefer to communicate, but I don't have them come into the studio before the session either, purely because, like I said, if they've got to drive a certain distance, it's long, it's time, I suppose. If they have other children, they've usually got toddlers, that's a little tricky as well. And plus I'm busy and I've just gone about it in a way where I've created the right information, the right content in terms of a PDF that I send out, a video that I send out of what to expect video. I shared that yesterday well, during the Animoto thing. When you give them all of the right information, you make them feel more confident in you. You build that trust um, right from the get go by providing them with that information. It's like if you, you gotta put yourself, 
you know, in a similar situation, if you were paying for a product and a service, um, it doesn't matter what it might be, you know, you're not going to pay for it or you're not going to feel very confident in, you know, that business if they don't tell you what the process is or how the final result is going to be achieved. So you got to think, right, what, what would I need to know about this to give me all of the information if I'm investing this amount of money? I do love hot glue. We're getting there. I like your flower just as it is right now. You like this one? Yeah, we could paint this. I don't know if I'd put a baby in there though. Look at that. So there's my base. Oh look, it kind of goes with the background. I'm going to do it here. It's perfect. <laughs> I love it. All right, so I'm just going to push down a little bit more there, make sure that hot glue is drying. And you could keep going. I'm going to try and get through this real quick so you guys don't have to obviously sit around all day watching me. Now this is quite big. Um, I'm going to work my way around with these petals. These are my big ones. And what I'm going to do is you can see I can start here and it's going to give that that great sort of support or I can come up a little higher and then as I come in with my layers, you know, I can sort of curl these around. So I'm probably going to start about an inch higher because remembering if we think about the size of our baby, I'll bring her over. Now she's going to be wrapped and curled up inside here. So I've got to think about where do I want the petals to stop in terms of them coming down around her? And if these are one of my inside ones, then I'm going to probably want those to come around the outside of the um, actual plate there because I'll be filling all of that with a beautiful soft wool to make it nice and um, soft. All right, we're getting more questions and questions about anything. Yeah, this is a perfect time to ask any questions that you yeah. might have. Yeah. Go for it. I love questions and it can be business, it can be personal, I don't mind. But yeah, it's a great way to hang out and spend this time together. So I'm just going to come around and overlap these. And someone has said, so the plates are cut a fat quarter. So I just cut the sides off the plates and um, just to kind of make those petals, but it's made it nice and strong there. And I've just used that material tape. And once I'm finished, I'll come in and I'll add some more structure to around the outside. And you can see with these petals, I've already kind of pre-stretched them a little bit. But with crepe paper, you really don't need that much hot glue. I know exactly what I want to put in this um, after I've photographed a baby in it. And I might not use it again for a baby, but my sister has a purebred white Persian and its name is Peony. And I think a, a giant Peony flower for her would be perfect. I think Peony needs her own Instagram account. <laughs> the most gorgeous cat in the world. Oh dear. All right. People bored yet? No, 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 definitely not, definitely not. Um, what size plates are these? These are just a dinner plate. So they're a disposable, recyclable cardboard dinner plate. And um, I can give you the dimensions shortly. I've got a ruler in here and I've got some spares. Oh gosh, we asked for any question. Someone's screen asked, calibration, screen please help. Calibration. <laughs> okay, so um, did you watch Rocco's class live the other day? If you did, he talked a little bit about screens. And, um, and the thing with screen calibration is there are some monitors, obviously, that are, you know, are going to be better at displaying all of the colors that Rocco talked about, but there's also like some monitors out there that are, you know, the top end ones that self calibrate. They're an ASO monitor. I have one of those. They're absolutely amazing, but they are a big investment. 
I don't think I got my first ASO monitor until, oh gosh, I think it was actually about six years ago and I've been doing this yeah. for nearly 17 years. So, you know, it was a huge investment for me. Um, but prior to that, I was using a spider. Um, there are many different devices out there there's Color Monkey, there's different things that you can you can use to calibrate your monitor. If you are, you know, handy um, and capable, you can self-calibrate, but I don't recommend that if you don't fully understand what it is you're looking for. But we'll get Rocco back in one day to talk a little bit more about that because I think it's really important. I see a lot of people struggling with different colors and things like that, and it's not, the actions that you're using, it's not, um, you know, the, the um, different things. It's often not being able to see the right colors on your screen. And when you push a color outside of its gamut, um, then you often can't see that on your screen, but other people might be able to if you're sharing that online. Um, another question here. So, can you please tell me what type of paint? So, what type of paint for the heart bowl to look wooden? What would oh. you recommend there? Good lord, wooden. Um, I don't know if you could make it look wooden. You... There are... I, I would actually go to the hardware store and ask them. Tell them exactly what it is that you're doing. And usually there's some sort of product. Like, I'd imagine like some sort of stain or something might actually do a it. stain yeah but i'm yeah. kind of thinking there is a contact it's like a plastic kind of contact that's got a wooden feel to it or you could print a onto a fabric here we go here's an idea if you can get some print fabric printed google that where you can get it done you could photograph the type of timber that you want mm -hmm and you could have that printed on a piece of material and then have that and, and make it, cut it out in a way so that you could stick it, I've gone a bit lopsided here, you could stick that to the outside of your heart bowl. I think that could actually really work. Um, now, have you ever dyed a Flacardi rug? No, I have not. <laughs> They're hard enough to wash. Um, yeah, I have thought about it and I did do a little bit of research about how, you know, how to do that. But um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure how you would do that because it would probably take a lot of dye and you would need to do it in a bathtub. So now I'm just going to keep working my way around here because I want to keep building the hey, thickness look, of this. Got somebody else who's asked, can you do an upcycle video of a maternity gown you already have? Oh. Like fancy it up a bit more maybe? Let me think about that. I'm thinking about all the maternity gowns I've got and I kind of like them as is. I'm thinking I don't really <laughs> want to upcycle one. But do you know what? I could find something else that I could do that in. And um, and we could, we could upcycle that and turn it into a maternity gown. What do you reckon? Oh, I reckon that would be pretty cool. Now somebody said that the live has gone a bit blurry, but I can assure you we're actually doing really well today. Um, yeah, we I would just some... check the um, settings of your internet maybe. Um, can these plates be ordered online? I think they can. Oh yeah, I think anything can be found online. Disposable party plates, recyclable, maybe look for. That's what these ones here are. So I am going one at a time here just to kind of build it up. There's two there. Oh, I like this question. What is the one photo that you still look at and say, this is it, this is my favourite? Oh, there's so one. many. One photo. Uh, you know, there's, there's kind of a few, but I, th if I think about, like, the first photo that really does come to mind is a photo I took of my grandparents together. And it was not long after they celebrated their 60th wedding anniversary. So 
I suppose that was a moment where I thought, Do you know what, like this is pretty, this is pretty amazing. I don't want to put those in there, but I'm sick of moving back and forth. <laughs> so going on with a smaller petal now, slightly sort of different shape. And someone's got some ugly green crepe paper. I Ooh. think they're going to try with that for the moment until Practice. the shop's open. I'm sure you could order it online. Yes, you can. You can order from Eckersley's, um, any type of online art and craft store, school supply stores. Um, they all have online. And there are different things that you can do to create paper to kind of fade the colours out too. Um, I know as soon as, as soon as water touches it, it does definitely fade the colours out. So there's probably some different things you could do to try and use it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I know I've tried to kind of spray paint um, crepe paper and things like that. I did want to try and paint some of this, but I just ran out of time, um, which is a funny thing to say right now, considering we've all got a lot of time. On our hands. This is a good question. I like this because it's to do with our, you know, what we're all going through at the moment. How did, um, how do you handle bookings that booked prior to the pandemic? Do you postpone? Um, uh, we don't know when this is going to end, or do you just refund? Do you know? Um, I don't take a deposit uh, prior to my why. shoot. So this is probably a good reason why. But yeah, I have in the past had situations where, you know, little babies were very sick or didn't quite make it, which was always very heartbreaking. And, you know, contacting those parents to give them back their money was always not great timing um, when they were grieving or going through a very difficult time. So I, um, I stopped taking a deposit, but I take it at the time of the session. But for me, with rescheduling clients right now, the thing is, Obviously, they're not going to get the newborn, newborn photos that, you know, they would hope to get. So I've been giving them advice. I've got a free PDF on my website that they can download. And I just tell them that we're going to get their baby back in the studio as soon as we can. And, you know, we'll stay connected. So I've got a long list of names to, you know, reach out and contact um, whilst, you know, we're sort of going through this with particular due dates. And yeah, it's up to me now just to make sure that I do stay connected, keep those communication lines open, and we do plan to get them in the studio as quickly as we can. And the thing is, you can still photograph older babies. You might not get the curly, the 20 curly newborn photos that you want, but you, what you can get are beautiful moments and beautiful smiles, connection between the parents and their baby, and, um, and photographs that you know they're gonna love. That's what it's about. Just because you're a newborn photographer doesn't mean you have to nail every single newborn pose every session. That was something that I thought of a lot when I started to call myself a newborn photographer. I'm like, right, well, I've got to get this pose, I've got to get that. I lost sight of why my clients were hiring me. And they were hiring me to document you know, that time, they were, they were to capture their baby small, to capture the connection between them and photographs you know that they're going to look back on in years to come. All right, could you imagine if you had some teenage kids, you know, that thought that it'd be nice to get out of bed before midday to come and help you with stuff like this? <laughs> Never. <laughs> um, Kelly, where did you get the petal template from? So this was one I actually made myself based off a lot of, um, I had previously purchased one, but it, the petals just didn't give me the right shape. So I wanted to have a nice soft sort of ruffle the edge here. Should we do a blog post on this one? I think we will yeah. and I'll share my templates with you. And um, I think, oh, my glue stick fell out. Thank you. I couldn't even see that down there. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah, so um, Michelle actually sent me a message before. Do you think we should do a blog post on this? So Totally. Yes, Michelle, get writing. <laughs> <laughs> so Michelle did a new blog post yesterday. Um, absolutely amazing. So if you've not been over to the newborn posing blog, newbornposing.com blog, um, please head over there because the last 
last few blog posts have been just filled with so much information and stuff that you could be working on right now. Great reading material late at night. I've been to Netflix a million times in the last couple of weeks and I can tell you there's nothing of nothing there that I need to watch. <laughs> it's actually quite frustrating at the moment. All my favorite shows, I've seen them all, all the episodes. Okay, here we go. When did you decide to make the move to add education to your business and why? So, why do you do what you do? <laughs> um, I think it was about 10 and a half years ago, someone contacted me and said, you know, because um, I'd been sharing obviously my work online, and they said, uh, you know, do you teach? And I said, oh, well, I haven't really taught anyone before, but you know, I'd be more than happy to show you a few things. And that's kind of how it started. Then I did a, my very first workshop was a small workshop of five people. And we had a couple of babies came in and I just showed them some safety sort of aspects of what it is that I, I did and how I positioned the baby to get the different sort of poses and things like that. And then um, I got on to Creative Live. So this is a kind of a cool story if you guys have got time. Um, <laughs> Everyone's got time at the moment, Kelly Brown. I don't know. People, are we dropping off? No, we're not. Okay. We've got 150, it's building. Holy smokes. So, um, my friend Sue Bryce contacted me and said, Creative Live are running a competition. And she said, I think you should enter it. And I was like, oh no. And the thought of me, so I was the type of person at school that if I had to stand up and do an oral presentation in front of the class, I would literally hyperventilate. Like I hated public speaking, I hated talking in front of anyone, even though I've won awards for being able to speak underwater, um, underwater <laughs> at Swimming Club. Um, I, the thought of being uh, presenting in public really had me shaking literally in my boots. So I undernarmed about it. Garrett said, no, you gotta do it, you really should. Anyway, it was a competition and the deal was that you had to do a three minute video um, explaining what it is that you do and how you can teach it better. And so Garrett and I created this three minute video and oh God, there were that many takes, it wasn't funny. I had, it was late in the afternoon and I may have had one or two vodkas to help great. calm my nerves. But I basically just had to talk to camera, show some photos and some video footage and things like that. And um, anyway, I submitted it. So they were going to choose six people from all of the submissions. And I believe there were hundreds and hundreds of yeah. submissions. Uh, I think there was like 400 and something from memory. I can't quite remember, but there was a lot of submissions I was told. Anyway, they... Um, we're going to choose six people out of all the submissions and then those six people would have to travel to Las Vegas uh, at the same time as WPPI was running and then we're going back to 2013. Um, anyway I got an email, oh sorry, yeah, those six people had to then do a live presentation in front of a panel of judges. So there were going to be four panel judges and six, the six chosen people would have to get up and do a five minute presentation on why they should teach what it is that they do on Creative Live. So basically Creative Live was gonna give away a platform to someone that, you know, that was gonna win and be chosen by this panel of judges, which was pretty, pretty scary. Anyway, so I got, I got an email back and it said, you know, uh, hi Kelly, thank you so much for your submission. Um, unfortunately, you have not been selected in the final six. However, we would love to offer you a class. So I kind of skipped the <laughs> skipped the the panel because that scared me more than anything being judged on a live five minute presentation. And uh, I went straight on to teach my very first class on Creative Live, and that was probably one of the most incredible experiences ever. But the thing is, I, growing up, I was a netball coach, um, a basketball coach, and I've always sort of 
you know, both my parents were coaches, so the teaching thing kind of came naturally because it was, I suppose, the way that we were raised and the way I was taught to understand things by my parents was the way that I knew that people needed to learn. And if you explain things in great detail um, and show, then obviously people are going to benefit from that. So yeah, I think we had, during my very first newborn posing class on Creative Live, I think there was 110,000 people that tuned in live to watch. And that was pretty ridiculous. <laughs> that was pretty phenomenal. So yeah, and my, that was the start of my sort of teaching career. Um, now, somebody's just trying to have a hunt around to see where you've done a photo of a baby in this particular photo. Oh, I haven't. This, this is, is a first, new. people. So guess what? If it doesn't work, you get to see me fail. <laughs> There is nothing wrong with failure. Just means that you know what not to do next time. That's it. <laughs> and I think the way that I've created the support and the structure around the outside of this um, has been based off how I created them originally. And knowing how to prevent, I suppose, well, thinking about how I could prevent them from wilting like the previous ones have. It's getting really hot in here. Do you want me to turn the air con on? No, it's okay. It shouldn't be too loud. Oh, I might blow everything away. Yeah. I, I won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got any more questions? Keep them coming. I love this stuff. Mm -mm. I'm trying to go as fast as I can so you can see the finished okay, so result. Can you just hold up one of the petals that you're gluing at the moment to show Oh, I just size. did the last one. Okay, so the next size down. So the last petal that I just I did that one was the first petal, number one. That was the first petal. So all of these are A4. So the height of this is an A4 piece of paper. That'll give you a good reference. So that I've done that and I've now just finished this one. And that again, the top of that is more A4 as well, size. It almost gives you the, like the bit of roughly texture. Yeah, and now I'm gonna move on to the, um, the smaller ones. So I haven't actually yet sort of stretched these ones out, but I'll be able to do that once I've got them in there. Okay, there are lots and lots and lots of questions here. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> um, so I think it's a large one. Oh, Quite a bit of conversation actually going on here. Oh, good, okay, I love that. So are you, Oh, now there was a question here. Da, 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 da. Maybe that's, uh, let's see. Um, there was a question here about clients. So I'm overlapping these as I work my way around. Oh, could you think about doing some boy style props, maybe? Oh, yes. Boys are kind of boring, though. Nah. <laughs> the girly stuff's so frilly. I just like sparkles, Well, though. the pool noodle, yes. <laughs> the pool noodle one, you could totally do um, as a circle, which someone in our group already has done, and you could create a round prop out of that and, um, and have a bit of fun. But yeah, let me think about what I can do for boys. I haven't burnt myself once. Oh, and somebody else has just asked, are we able to purchase this template? Kelly? So we're actually gonna do a blog post and I'll share with you my little pattern because I just drew it on an A4 piece of paper and you can change it yourself, um, but we'll do a blog post on it and we can share that with you. You won't have to buy it. And because um, literally it was just me scribbling on a piece of paper. Um, Michelle is actually helping me out here with the questions because I did get lost with that um, one question that I couldn't find. Um, what type of monitor do you use uh, to show clients their gallery? So when we have a client viewing, they come in and they see, we actually have five by seven images printed off 
ready for them to view. But we also have just a large TV screen with their photographs playing and a nice slideshow. And uh, it's not calibrated or anything like that, but what they are seeing are beautiful prints of their photographs. And, um, and they have been obviously printed on, you, you know, from a calibrated monitor and then with all of the right printer profiles and beautiful, on beautiful paper by Canson Infinity. So where you're up to so far, somebody's asked, do you think this will be strong enough to hold a newborn in the middle? Yes, absolutely. So that's the thing, because the baby's going to be wrapped. Whenever I put a baby in something like this, I don't want the actual sides to hold the baby. I just need the baby to be wrapped and surrounded by something that's nice and soft. Mm. So we'll create, I'll show you at the end when I get through this, because it's obviously drying nice and, and quickly here. And but yeah. yes, um, for everyone who's wondering, you will be able to come back and watch this. As with all the live videos that Kelly does, they do stay in the group. You can go to the videos tab, you can go to the announcements, you can even use the search field. That'll bring up every topic on Absolutely. what it is that you're looking for as well. You can also go to the YouTube channel where you'll be able to find a whole playlist there called Free Tutorials. And it's just about everything that Kelly's done since the 17th of March. Um, so all the videos are there too. Yeah. Okay. Oh, here's a question. How much of a difference did it make from working solo to having uh, Garrett and other people working with you as more of a team? So. so this was a big step in the business going from, you know, a one man band to having people come and join me because you do at some point have to go, right, well, what, what areas of my business do I need help with? Um, so Garrett and I, we met a long time ago, um, it's probably almost 11 years now, but I used to do a lot of weddings and Garrett would come and assist me on those weddings to start with. I'm not a good photographer, <laughs> he just wanted somebody to keep a company. <laughs> <laughs> we met through my mum, um, they worked together and so it was just this sort of, you know, this, we both had a passion for photography and, and he was always willing to come and give me a hand. And Garrett is one of those people that, you know, he, if he doesn't know how to do something, he will find a way to learn how to do it. Sorry, I just burnt my finger and I was trying not to. Not to say this way. <laughs> <laughs> so polite. Um, and so, yeah, it was always like, I'm, I'm a person, I'm an ideas person. I love to come up with different things and always think that there, you know, everything's possible. And he would go, well, let's just do it. So that's how we started working together. And then eventually he quit his job under my advice and um, he came and joined me because, you know, he's great on devices in terms of technology and I knew that that was an area that wasn't my strength, um, whereas he really enjoys that. So he knows so much more about it because it's something that he enjoys and wanted to learn and, and know about. So it didn't take long before Garrett sort of took over looking after my websites and all of that kind of stuff. Video, he loves, ow, taking videos, <laughs> as you can tell. I should just create it like a little bleep that I can put over it so you don't have to hold back. <laughs> I can tell you, my finger is red. It's sore. Oh, is it just from the, the trigger? Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. My trigger finger. I'm burning calories in the fingers today. Um, yeah, so then, Obviously, it got to the point where I needed some help with admin work. So that was after I came back from Creative Live and I think I had over 3,000 emails to respond to from my very first Creative Live. People just wanted to, you know, connect with me, share their story. And, and I was like, I just can't keep up with the emails and, and all of that stuff. So I had someone come on part time to start with. And um, yeah, and then Michelle came and joined the team when we moved in here to the building. And you know, she's a wealth of knowledge, as you all know, you read the blog posts, she's always in the group answering all the questions. And you know, she's been in the industry um, for a long time, knows, you know, she's just such a big support in terms of knowledge for me, but she's also an incredible graphic designer and um, an editor and retoucher. So whenever we have graphics that need to be made, that was another area that I like doing, but honestly, it takes me a hundred times longer than her. <laughs> so you kind of got to go through that process of what areas of my business 
would be better for someone who was more qualified to do with that. Um, how far do you want to take your business in terms of how busy do you want to be? How often do you want to be shooting? Because we all know that the, pho the photography side of things is a very small amount of what we do as business owners when we have a photography business. You know, that's probably 25% of our time is the shooting. There's the editing, the admin, the invoicing, the ordering, the printing, the packaging, the, the emailing, there's the, the client communication that you've got to stay on top of so that your clients, again, feel like they've got all the information that they, they need prior to a shoot. Oh my God, I cut too many out. <laughs> it is coming together so well. I've just shown everyone like a bit of a side angle there to show how beautiful it's actually coming up. It's really, really it's, cool. We'll see. I wanted it to kind of curl in a bit more, but I'm going to have to come around and kind of really stretch the petals. Well, you haven't petals. stretched out the petals for these ones, have you? You're no. just kind of putting it in there and then you can go along and stretch them afterwards. Because I, I think that's probably a good way of doing it too, because you don't want to close in that hole in the middle where the baby's going to go so yeah that's right pre-stretch them you're kind of stuck with that sort of shape um whereabouts do you get your products from my albums and things like that they are all from graphy studio so we actually did a live video on products what sort of products are best for you and your brand and i shared some of the the products that are in my collection i've got a collection that, that graphy collect graphy studios sell and um, I designed that with Graphy, with all beautiful colors and textures. And we talked a lot in that video. So go to the um, video section or the announcements tab. Oops, sorry. And you'll find, um, you'll find that video. It's a great one for knowing what products to buy and sell. But what I love about them is that they have a, a very big variety of products at different price points. So if you are just starting to offer products and you don't have, you know, a lot of money to invest or you, you're not charging, you know, high-end prices, then they've got products for you. Um, there's a lot of lovely comments going on in here. You're making me all blush. But um, Kelly, you do a reveal wall for your sessions. Do you find that it competes with album sales? Um, do you know, I've priced my packages in a way that I want to sell the reveal wall. The albums are beautiful, but what I do is I want to sell the reveal wall because then I offer my other packages at 50% off. So when my clients love my albums, they usually buy those as an add-on to my reveal wall. And that's how I tend to upsell, if that makes sense. They touch and feel the albums and love them. Mm. With the reveal wall, um, when you do the prints for the reveal, do you give the parents those prints when they make their purchase? Yes, yeah, so what they do is they come in, we've got five by seven prints and because we do in-house printing, it makes it very easy. And then we have a set of 20 mats that we just reuse and we temporarily tack those prints down into those mats. And, um, and then if they decide that that's what they wanna take home that day, then we say, can we get you a tea or a coffee? It'll take us five to 10 minutes to package this up and you can take it home with you um, today if you like. If, you want, if you're happy to wait, everybody waits. And I, we just get them a cup of tea, cup of coffee, whatever it is. And um, we quickly go up and get 20 new mats out, stick them down. And they're hinged mats as well, not the slip ones. So they're nice and quick and easy to, to get those prints in there without damaging them. Yeah. Now, Lolly is going to bed because it's 3.30 a.m. in oh France. Oh, my gosh. And she just can't anymore. So, good night, have a good sleep, and watch it in the morning. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> this is a bit of a tedious kind of one. I'm sorry. I knew it would take some time. Imagine if I'd cut all the petals out here. Okay. Still be going at lunchtime. Oh, so who is this? I have to find your name. Uh, Lydia, hi from the UK, watching with my six-year-old boy, Bowen, with a high temperature. He oh. is loving watching you make this flower. Oh, well, I hope he's all right. Poor little thing. OK, 
Okay, here we go. What are your thoughts about putting your prices on your website? So I don't put my actual prices on there, but what I do is have packages start at. And then that stops the price hunters. You know, I get a lot of people that used to that would contact me and say, how much? Like I think one email even said literally how much, and that was it. And I was like, oh, that's a bit rude. Anyway, so now I'm onto the shorter pieces. Anyway, I, uh, so I wanted to stop the, the price hunters and, and put on there that my packages start at a certain amount of money. And then that way it got the serious people to inquire. Um, a lot of people would still inquire and say, you know, do you have any smaller packages and things like that? And then to my, my response would always be, I'd go back with another question and say, what is it exactly that you're looking for? Because, you, you know, if you're not busy, why not offer a, sh a smaller package or offer something so that you're working and you're creating? Mm -hmm. So even though your packages might start at X price, if you're not getting bookings and you're not getting inquiries, maybe offer a smaller package with a shorter session time, more like a mini type session, and then you might start getting more people in um, because it's, you know, they, they sometimes just need to see the photographs. People often will say, you know, well, I can't really afford that, but they'll book you based on that, that packaging starting out. But when they see those photographs, you're giving them a reason to, to purchase those higher, higher products. Now, we've got another question here. Is your reveal wall process explained somewhere? Yes, it is. It's in the pricing for profit um, product on the website. It is at a ridiculously cheap price at the moment, I think, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I think so. I don't know. I changed the prices. I should know this. Um, yes, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, there is a whole video dedicated to it there, so you can find that on there. But also have a look through, um, just trying to think, Michelle... Could you please let me know if there is something on the blog about reveal walls? I think there might be. It's such a great package and it's been my biggest selling package for quite a few years. And it's changed slightly as well over the years with um, you know, the different ways that I've provided the matted, matted prints in in boxes, wooden boxes, material covered boxes, and as my prices have increased, I've gone up in in the way that I sort of present those to my clients. Now, somebody has just asked here if I have a photo of the reveal wall. I'm just going to take one of our mobile cameras in next door and do a little bit of a tidy up before I switch over to it. So I'm going to leave you in Kelly's capable hands just for a second. Okay, I can see some questions. How do you keep your sanity while taking your own kids' photos, <laughs> especially when they're younger? Do you know, I used to take a lot of photos of my kids when they were younger, growing up, and I would always have an idea of what it was that I wanted to create, and, and then I would get frustrated that they didn't want to be a part of it. So I soon learnt, bribery sometimes didn't even work, I soon learnt that I just needed to involve them in the process, the creative process, a little bit more. What I did was ask them, how would they like to be photographed? You know, you've seen the photographs that mummy takes, how would you like to be photographed? Is there a particular way? Would you like to be photographed with something? And I used to then just start taking pictures of them with, you know, their favorite items um, or coming up with created ideas. Now's the perfect time for you to create some inspiration boards with your kids and get them to start looking for things on on the internet depending on how old your kids are um, but yeah or finding pictures in books if you've got kids that love storybooks get them to have a look through some of the books and go right you know how would you like to be photographed have a look through your books to see if there's some ideas some outfits some costumes would you like a you know um, how would you would you like me to take a photograph and, and share how you're feeling I've got a photo of my um, my daughter Mackenzie, and she's it's a composited image, and it's a bit more of a creative one. She was very fascinated with Maleficent, and she um, wanted to be photographed like her. So I made a, a feather kind of neck thing, and then um, I also created a, a space in around her that I could composite a few different elements in. 
and she said that she always felt like she was trapped behind bars or she was trapped but couldn't get out of her own head. And for a small child to say that, like that was huge. So we created like this tower um, and, and bars on the windows and then this bird was sitting, this sort of like a crow, or a raven type bird was sitting there on one of the bars looking at her. And I created a, a photograph based on her favorite character at the time and how she was feeling. And she loved that process. So I think it was in terms of keeping the sanity, it's more just about involving them in the process and getting their imaginations to start flowing as well. Because, you know, I think, and I did, I talked about this the other day in an interview, um, someone asked me, you know, a particular question and I said well when I was growing up you know and my parents were growing up generations before me we were told to go to school get good grades get a good job one day you'll get married you'll settle down you'll have a family we've all heard it and not once were we ever told to follow your passions go after your dreams just do whatever it takes you know do what you love no one ever said that to us growing up and I think right now the biggest thing for me is to encourage my kids to do what it is that they want and to try things to see if it's something that they enjoy and love. And I want to encourage them to follow a passion because if I can do it, you know, anyone can. And I want them to believe that anything's possible if they put their mind to it. So think, try to kind of think about those photo shoots that you do with your kids from a different place you know, with a different kind of idea and concept and you'll be amazed at what you could come up with. And Kelly, the petals there, are they changing colour? Yes, yeah, so this is a darker, slightly darker one. As you come into the centre of a flower, it usually gets a little darker. So that's what I've done. I've gone with a cream, a white and into a green. Good pickup. Beautifully subtle as well. Like, it is just gorgeous. Now, I do have a shot here of our reveal wall. There we go. Now, the lighting is not great in there. The lighting in there is um, not great for our um, setup with the cameras, but what you can see is that wall is actually, um, that's, the, the camera is actually in the doorway. So when they walk down the big long hallway with the huge, huge big beautiful prints on the wall, um, that's the first thing that they see right at the very end. They just keep on walking closer and closer and closer to it. So it's their photos that sit there and it's all 20, um, prints that Kelly captures and then uh, to the uh, to the left um, is where the large TV is and that usually has a, um, a slideshow on it. So that is it. And going back to the question about building a team, um, you know my husband Rob, he joined our team six, seven years ago now, six and a half years ago. 2014. Yeah and Honestly, um, you know, never in my wildest dreams did I ever think that I'd be running a business with my husband. But I am hopeless with math, accounting, numbers. I hate it. I cannot stand it. Nothing drives me bonkers more than doing numbers and finding all of that. And I hated doing it for myself. So Rob is a numbers guy and he just fell into that area of the business so well. And then a few years ago, he really kind of um, took off in terms of online marketing and understanding the way that social media platforms work in terms of their algorithms and how to target different audiences. Like I was looking at what he was doing in terms of ads and campaigns and you guys see everything all over the internet. Like that's him, he does that. He knows how, he gets it out there. And you wouldn't know about me and you wouldn't be here in this group watching me if you didn't see my content on the internet. So um, he's out brilliant at understanding how all of that works. And um, this is where I said before about identifying your own strengths and weaknesses and then finding a team of people around you that you know, are so much better suited to that particular area. Oh, I'm on my last, last petal style of petal here. My finger's hurting. <laughs> this is looking so good. I'm just going to show a slightly There's different There's many, angle. many layers here. What I'm actually going to do, 
Oh, I've got a pair of scissors here somewhere. I am gonna tailor this slightly different. What do I do with my scissors? Ah, oh, thank you. I've put them somewhere. Somewhere safe? Yeah, as we, we call that place safe. I just want to trim the bottoms of this one off a little bit. I'll come down a couple. Yeah. Ah, they're hiding. Thank you. So what I'm going to do is just trim the bottoms of these off so it sort of starts to come down a little bit more there. And these aren't curled yet either. No. So um, you'll find that they'll kind of bunch up and kind of move in. I love how the crepe paper folds and works. Oh, my finger. You're going to end up with a blister. Now, um, I just went back through, and Michelle did mention a little while ago, there is not something on the blog about uh, reveal walls, but she's also got there a little star and then runs to add it to the list. <laughs> <laughs> so whilst we're going through this, Michelle is working from home. Um, a lot of people say, you know, we've been talking about photographers working right now in the industry and um, obviously we're not photographing people. Garrett and I are keeping great social distance here, but we also, it's like we live together. You know, when you talk about being surrounded by the same people every day in your household um, and the rules and restrictions around that, well, we've been in and out of the studio every day together and it's not like we go anywhere else. <laughs> we actually don't like going anywhere else. <laughs> we, we actually like isolation. It's fine. <laughs> I like social distancing. No, I don't actually. Um, okay. Will the stout flower stay white or are you going to paint it? You could spray paint it and have a little bit of fun. Um, you could come in between each of the layers and kind of add like something in down in into the base of it to give it a bit of colour. If you're patient enough, we're great with um, painting. I'd probably look at some different types of paints that you could use to um, create some different effects. Now, does Rob do a class on Facebook? Um, so we are in the midst of putting a class together for social media marketing. And the thing is, every time we go to map out a tutorial and a lot of planning and thought goes into every class that's on newbornposing.com. Um, it's not that, you know, Garrett just picks up a camera and films me doing stuff. Like, we have to go through a lot of pre-planning and production to create one class. So with something like social media, um, we have to make sure that we're going to teach all of the right topics so that people understand it. Um, yes, something that's non-toxic, absolutely. The, um, the other thing is, when we do teach it, um, you know, we're going to have to create a lot of visuals for it as well. So it's just having the time, time to do it at the moment. And like all of you that are homeschooling right now, so are we. <laughs> uh, Rob's been really good at that. Now, we've got a comment here that your backgrounds are always so beautiful and unique. So this I one is from you. Shades of Jade. This is, um, I haven't actually photographed with this one because I got it not long before I was going away overseas and then I, when I got back from overseas was when all the restrictions were put in place. So I haven't had an opportunity to photograph anyone on it yet. And um, we thought this would be perfect for today being floral and of course it's in Kelly's um, color palette of grayish <laughs> that's anything that's not too bold or outrageous <laughs> yeah we got any more questions keep keep them coming guys some of you editing off to the side there what are you all doing during okay. your days is crepe paper the same as tissue paper no so tissue paper is very, very um, thin. 
and it doesn't have any give. Crepe paper, I'll show you, I'll grab a piece. Crepe paper is um, kind of gathered, so you can pull it and stretch it and give it some shape. So see how I'm kind of just stretching it there? You can see now how it's kind of given it that curl. Um, and I'm gonna come around with all of these pieces when I'm done here and I will give them all a little bit of a stretch and a bit of shape, but it's easier to put them in like this um, to get them all sort of layered and then you can kind of come in and start sort of, where did I finish? Oh, there. Yeah, I suppose crepe paper, it's kind of like stretch paper. Like you have stretch fabric, it's stretch paper. Yeah. But once you stretch it, that's it. Yeah, and I'm not putting the, these in terribly flat either. And you don't need, with crepe paper, you don't need a lot of glue. So I'm just kind of putting one to two sort of dabs of hot glue in and they're, they're slightly layered. Your backdrops that you use up there, Kelly, what size are they? So most of the big ones I've got hanging behind me are about three metres wide by five metres long. So very big. I do a lot of family portraits and things like that. So I, um, I like the big ones, that's for sure. But they're also great to photograph. I do babies on props and things like the one that's behind me. I've got a few others that are, that are a bit floral and I'll, um, if I have older siblings, I'll have them kind of sit down, hold the baby on a beautiful backdrop or sitters. Um, how has your style evolved from when you first started? When did you really find your style and fall in love with your work? I like you, that. That's a good one. Do you know, that's something, it took me a really long time to kind of identify my style. I followed, um, a lot of trends early on and thought, oh, well, somebody else is doing this, I've got to do it, you know, to be a newborn photographer, I've got to make my photos look like that. And, um, and then that's when I lost sight of, I suppose, my style. And when I thought about it, it was um, probably about three years after I started photographing babies that I really went, you know what, I don't like hot pink. <laughs> I don't like giant flowery headbands. And I had created many photos, don't you worry. But because other people were doing it, and that's the thing, I see every day on the internet, people creating the same thing that someone else is doing. And when you do that, you don't separate yourself. You don't stand out from the crowd. So for me, it was not about can, you know, copying what the latest trends were or buying the latest prop that's being released. It was about finding what I liked, what I, how I wanted to photograph, using colours that, that resonated with me that I thought would go really well with babies. And that's why I've always been very drawn to, when I think of a baby, it's pure. You know, um, it's, it's natural, it's, it's soft, it's, um, you know, it's everything that is, you know, um, organic, I suppose, in terms of fresh, Born, like I don't know I'm trying to think of all the different words that could possibly describe it but for me it's about you know staying true to that and photographing babies in a way that it you know is organic is natural and not um, following trends so if it took a little while it took confidence for me to go out and do my own thing but um, the minute I did that and the, and the minute I stopped worrying about what everyone else was doing um, my work really started to take off, which was kind of crazy. Now, you asked before, what are, what are people doing? Um, Trish uh, Beasley is actually making masks for essential, essential businesses and their employees once all of the editing is done. Good on you. Fantastic. Do you know, it is amazing what all of our frontline workers are doing right now and when you see people come together and cheer them on and support them, it's really incredible how human people, you know, hum, well, human people, humans come together um, to support and encourage one another and celebrate each other's successes. Now yeah, we've got Anita. She doesn't have a question, but she just wanted to say a big thank you um, for all your time, energy, and commitment in a time when life is very different. Really look forward to these lives each day. We're in Vancouver, Canada. Um, also, you come in at 5.30 p.m. 
Uh, so my husband knows when he has to be done with work <laughs> then so I can watch. Oh, that's so good. Oh, I love it. Oh, here we go. Here's another good one. Uh, who is this? This is Monica. Do you think one should get proper photography education through a certified school? So if you can attend a college, uh, I did. I attended a night college and I did um, online. I did a diploma of photography online. But when I went to college, I learned about the fundamentals of photography. I learned about um, you know, exposure. I learn about how to focus and composition and all of those things. Um, whilst I teach all of that now in mine, you don't need certain qualifications, but I highly recommend that people go and learn all of those fundamentals because it is such a great place to start. And when you pick up your camera to photograph a baby, you should know exactly um, without even thinking, it should come as second nature, what your camera settings need to be, um, where to put your light, so that your attention can be focused on the baby. And you don't have to worry then about, um, you know, getting it sharp in camera. Like, if you are taking 300 photos a session to produce 20, um, then you need to work on your camera skills. Um, I've been teaching, you know, like I said before, for over 10 years now, and it's one thing that I love to teach is, you know, understanding exposure and how to get it right in camera so that you're not sitting in front of your computer trying to fix a photo because you didn't understand how to get your lighting right, how to get your exposure right, um, and things like that. Obviously, babies are a little bit unpredictable. You know, they move very quickly, so sometimes you've got to be so quick with that camera and you shouldn't be fumbling with your camera settings um, when you're capturing them because your attention should be focused purely on you know their comfort their safety and you know and then you can start to kind of spend a little bit more time on your styling on your perfecting the pose and all of that because you can just pick up the camera and get a shot yeah it's, it's almost like I know when I first watched Kelly um, you know, it was almost like a muscle memory. You don't have to think about um, what it is that you're actually doing with the camera. You can completely concentrate on the subject. And that really, I think, makes a difference with your photography because, you know, at the end of every session, we have a bit of a giggle as well because Kelly will take either 48 or 52 photos to get a gallery of 20. And it's either 48 or 52 every single time. So. It's like you don't um, you don't have that you know second guessing of yourself as far as what your camera's doing, so you can actually focus on the capture. You know? Yeah, and then you can get creative with your camera angles and things like that. Um, play with your lighting once you know it. You can play with the position of your light to create different lighting effects and styles um, to get different results for your galleries. Oh my God! I've got three petals left. <laughs> Um, so we've got another question here. Um, I have your marketing class and pricing, but how do you stand out in a crowd of super crowd of super saturated market like Dallas, Texas, especially when you're new? This is the thing. It will take you a while, but if you focus on customer service and working with the customers that you do have, then and create referral programs, you'll soon start to build your audience, your, your client base. And when you do shoot for yourself and you find things that are different to everyone else, you follow your style, all of that kind of stuff, you will start to stand out. You know, source props and things from different places. Um, follow, be inspired by, you know, um, artists that aren't photographers then you know bring that into your work and I think you will be fine but in terms of your marketing you've just got to stay present you've got to stay um, you know in front of your clients uh, your current clients and new potential clients and be sharing information that is going to be relevant to them of interest to them what is it that they are going to interact with what might they be interested in right now how are your arms, Kelly? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, your backdrops, what type of fabrics do you use for them? Um, these ones up here. Mm. So this is like a sort of a calico cotton material, like a muslin-y, it's, it's a thick sort of calico. And then my other backdrops, they are canvas. And I have done a video, um, a tutorial DIY, it's here in the group, on painting your own canvas. So you can watch me paint one, you can fast forward through the boring bits and, and so forth. But look at this. Now, I've created this beautiful big flower here. Um, I haven't stretched all of the um, the petals just yet, but what I want to do is I want to pop something in here that is going to create the um, the support that's going to go around the baby. So give me two seconds. Okay. Now there's um, <laughs> how many petals in the flower? A lot. Um, I think that so is the question. I've gone through 15. All of these pack, all of these petals are 15 packets of this. So, and they are two and a half meters by 50 centimeters. Um, those packets. So I've gone through 50 packets. So it depends on the size of your petal um, when you're cutting them out. So it's basically every petal that I cut out from all 15 packets. So I used a lot. five different shaped petals, three packets per petal. <laughs> well, there we go. Um, okay, so if your client asks for a specific shot that isn't your style, how do you respond? Um, this is the thing. Our clients are paying us for a product and service. What they want is what we have to deliver, whether it's something that we do or not. So if they bring a fancy crocheted outfit that looks like a ladybug or a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle and it's not what you do, then you photograph that baby in that outfit and then you get paid for doing that. You just don't show it on your website or on your Facebook page. Um, and don't give them a watermarked copy of it if you don't want people to know that you took it. <laughs> it's pretty simple. So remember that your clients are paying you for a product and service the same way you pay other businesses for products and services. Now for those who have just joined us, you can come back and rewatch this at any time. It will be in the videos tab, you can search for it. Um, and it will also be in the announcements at the very, very top of the, um, of the page. So you can find everything you need in this group. We keep it all here for you. Um, but yeah. I'm being noisy here, sorry. That's all right. All right, so I'm just grabbing a few things to show you how I will potentially put a baby in here, but I haven't curled those leaves yet because that will take me a little while. So I have just used one of my cloth diapers, my cloth nappies, and they are literally like a bit of towel that is a square. So you could use hand towels, but I love these. I've been using them ever since I started photographing babies. And I have rolled one up to create the well for the baby. And now I'm just creating one that's gonna fit in this other little space here. Uh, Angie just joined, whoa, just joined, and this looks epic. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is loving crafting on Thursdays. We love crafting. I think this day. is one of the most popular lives that we do each week. And thankfully, unlike um, last week, our lives are working and Facebook has got their things sorted. It's very nice. Okay, so you can see I've created now that nice well. You could do that with socks filled with rice. That's going to give it a bit of weight, going to make it nice and stable. You could fill it with um, lots of different types of supports that you've got, but you basically just want to create something that's nice and soft and supportive that's going to help keep that baby in position there. And then something smaller underneath for the little baby's bum and back. And then I've just got like a little curly felt, like a round one, but you could use pretty much anything here in the center. We're gonna give those a little bit of life and shape after we're finished. All right, so I've got my baby. I'm just gonna push this off to the side here. I will do a proper shoot with this when we do our blog post so I can show you the results. And, um, but yeah, if I'm going to put a baby in here, you know, 
I wouldn't put the baby in so that they are, you know, a straight line. I want to give them a little bit of a curly sort of shape. So this is where I potentially would have them, you know, somewhat on their side like this and following that circular shape of the prop. And you can see just by like you placing that baby in there in your hands, how curling those leaves up is just going to create this beautiful little cocoon. Yeah, it's going to look so great good. when it's done. Uh, where did you get the furly, uh, furly, furly cur? <laughs> <laughs> this one, I believe I got from Divine Miss Ruby um, quite some time ago uh, when Ali used to, to have it. So yeah, it was one of my, um, my first curly felts actually. All right, so I'm just going to turn her slightly on her side. Normally I would do this obviously with her on my lap. I'll bring this bit of material around. Gosh, I've never wrapped so awkwardly in my life. Now, um, have you ever painted on fabric and have you ever washed your um, fabric shades of jade drops? I haven't actually washed um, jade's fab drops, no. I don't quite know how. I, I, because they're painted and I don't know what type of paint is used to paint them, I'm guessing that, um, and the type of fabric, they could potentially um, be sort of painted with something that could run um, if it's a watertight paint. So I probably wouldn't wash them. Um, I don't really, if you, I don't, I suppose if you're photographing a baby and it poos on there, um, then you might have a bit of a problem trying to get that out, but maybe just sponge it instead of trying to actually wash it. But yeah, I would contact Jade about um, the washing and care instructions for her backdrops for sure. But yeah, my, my canvas ones, I paint them with interior wall paint. So when I'm, um, you know, if, if they get weed on or pooed on or anything like that, if I don't have a nappy on a baby, then I, um, I can just sponge them. Would you leave a diaper on for this? Yeah, absolutely because I've got paper plates in there. And how would you protect the crepe paper otherwise? Um, I will, I just wouldn't put a baby in here without a nappy on. <laughs> <laughs> Problem solved. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just getting her wrapped up here in this curly kind of shape. I can't believe so many people have joined us today and they've stayed online. It's going to be so cool to see the end result of this. All right, so that's her. That's her down with Jane. I mean, obviously the light is not great. But yeah, I would always want to try and get the baby obviously in the complete centre there. You can see they're not coming in contact with the paper. So I would always wrap a baby in a way that's not going to have, you know, um, arms and legs on, on top of anything. Even though this is soft, it's still, it's not like a soft fabric or material. So you always want, you know, the baby to be nice and comfortable and any type of surface could irritate them, um, bother them, make them sort of jump, startle. But yeah, I would kind of fluff all this up and then as I'm, well, and then kind of curling all of these petals so that they come around. So I'll bring her out and then I'll start doing that. I'll take her out with the curl. Okay. Alrighty, so I'll keep the towels there. It's gonna to give me a good idea of how I am going to position a baby in here. So what I'm gonna do is just come around with these layers and kind of just give them a bit of a stretch and a pull and they're gonna help kind of curl those over. So when you go to put a baby in something like this, you might just need an extra set of hands from the parents to kind of help you with, um, with getting, getting the leaves sort of held back there. But I would go around the entire flower, you know, pulling and stretching that crepe paper to give it that bit of 
extra, but you can kind of see there how it's separating now the petals, which is exactly what I want. Yeah, it's giving that real um, textured sort of look, like really yeah. building up. Rather All than right. Seem so flat. Do you think um, making one of these with eight inch plates instead of 10 to 12 inch plates would work as well? You just want to make sure that it's big enough for a baby. Um, ideally, like when I'm looking at the size of a space like this, I'm, try, I'm going to always try to put my elbow to my hand in. Um, that's the size that I'm going to need from my elbow to my hand to, put, to you know, have a comfortable size to put a baby in. If you wanted to make something to put twins in, if you wanted to put them in here head to toe, then you're probably going to have to, um, you know, photograph, um, sorry, make it a little bigger in terms of the size of the, the shape. That's for sure. But yeah, you can have some fun with this. Um, um, I'm definitely going to have fun. I'm going to keep sort of working on it. Um, off, oopsie. Oh, blooper reel. Ripping it, <laughs> Kelly. Good job. But yeah, um, <laughs> you do have to be very careful. Yeah. This part does take a very, very long time. It does require a fair bit of patience. Yep. And, um, and a seat and a coffee. Yeah. So you're doing it at night or wine. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so I'm going to go. Um, thank you for joining me to make my, my flower. You can already start to see there where I've started curling them. Um, here, how it's starting to separate the, the petals. And I'm going to keep working on that. I'm going to take some photographs. We're going to do a blog post. It's going to be awesome. I will share with you the template for the petals. If you want to get crafting and create your own, you could have a little bit of fun. You could use different colors, beautiful soft pinks and golds, and uh, create something that's unique for you. That's the thing. And I, it's what I want to encourage all of you to do. Think outside the square own your photography because no one sees it like you and create photographs that you can be proud of. It is great to pra practice and try new techniques and, and see things that other people are doing. Um, that's great, but do you know what? Don't do it just because someone else is doing it. Do it because you love it. Do it because it suits your current style and your style will continually evolve and change as you grow as a photographer. And that's the thing that you've got to be open to, trying new things that may just take you on a different path. And I look back at my work and it changes slightly all the time. You know, I used to be very much into my sort of, you know, creamy brown tones and things like that. Now, when I look through my portfolio and I have to choose, say, 10 to 15 images for anything in particular, I will have a look at those 10 photos. And this is actually a really good idea for you at home. Go through all of your photographs and then create a folder. But what I want you to do is pick your favorite 10 photographs and do it in a way that you, um, you've got to send them to someone for whatever reason. So you've got to pick your best 10 photographs, put them in a folder and then start to identify once you've got those 10 photos, what the similarities are. And it, it'll, you'll be amazed. When I do it, I am drawn to really rich, dark tones, darker images, and they're my favorite, favorite images of all time. And it's quite funny what you, um, what you start to sort of see in yourself that you haven't noticed or recognized before. But I want you guys to have a great day. Tomorrow, I'm going to deconstruct two photographs, two award images of mine, um, and show you how I captured them in camera and that'll be a lot of fun I've got some behind the scenes videos and photos that I'll share with you and I'll talk about the way that I lit them and um, and a little bit about the conversations that the judges had and what they saw and what I didn't particularly see even if you don't enter awards it'll be very educational and also um, I made them so you'll see how I make some new other props as well but yeah have a great day everyone thank you so much for sticking sticking with me the stamina is real, I can feel it. And uh, I will, some, someone said, thank you, Kelly and Tim, maybe a glass of wine. Absolutely. <laughs> My finger's very red. All right, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye, guys.